I'll be honest with you, I am so excited to be here. I'm really excited to be at a regular comedy gig. Seriously, because about one week ago I was in New York, I was doing a show for this investment bank. They were doing a charity night to raise money for villages in India. I thought this is so stupid, because one year ago I was in a village in India, and they were doing a charity night to raise money for investment banks in New York. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I love this job. I started doing it in London a few years ago. And when I started, I was debating between doing a bartending course and getting into stand-up comedy. For the bartending course that I looked at, they only taught you how to mix the drinks. They didn't teach you how to juggle the glasses. Now, let me ask the ladies here, is it cool when they juggle the glasses? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, and that's what I thought. If I can't juggle the glasses, I'm never going to get laid. That's why I got into stand-up comedy. And that was seven years ago, and in the last seven years, I can't tell you how many times. How many times I wish I had taken that bartending course. <laughs> but it is a fun profession, you get to travel quite a bit. I was recently flying on an airline called Kingfisher in first class. And what I didn't know was, if you wear glasses and you're sitting in first class, somebody will come to you and offer to clean your glasses. I didn't know this. I'm sitting in first class. This gorgeous air hostess walks up to me with a tissue in her hand. She says, sir, would you like me to clean your spectacles? Exactly, cabin pressure, I did not hear the word spectacles. <laughs> it's a little bit embarrassing when you're standing in first class with your pants around your ankles saying, give me the first class experience! <laughs> and traveling nowadays, it's ridiculous now with all this terrorism stuff. I remember the olden days, my father was a tea planter. We were on this flight once, aircraft goes to the end of the runway, stops, turns around, parks in a secluded part of the airport. The pilot announces, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to request you to deplane the aircraft in an organized fashion. Please do not panic, we have received news that there is a bomb on the flight. <laughs> Indians being Indians, nobody moved. Somebody's eating the food they've carried with them, somebody's ordering a drink literally had to be pushed outside the aircraft. On the way out, people have stopped to ask the pilot, if the plane explodes, will we get a refund? <laughs> right? Literally get pushed outside the aircraft, call up the police. Police says, not our damn job. Call up the Air Force. Air Force says, not our damn job. Call up the bomb squad. The bomb squad sends two mechanics. These guys come, look at the plane from outside. Say, huh? It doesn't look like anyone's tampered with it. You can go. True story, between 200 passengers and two pilots, they decided, listen, this is a two-hour flight. If this plane is going to blow, it's going to blow in the next two hours. Why don't we just wait? 